get down. There's, they still have some of this meat, so they're very excited about it. You're being very good sitting back there. You'll get the first piece. You get the biggest piece today. Well, they like it. Ugh. Anyway, I'm going to talk about striking balance. It was a um, documentary sort of series. It was, um, I think it had, well, anyway, it was narr narrated by Jim Cuddy. It was sort of like it was a nature conservancy sort of thing. Anyway. Um, so it focused on different parts of Canada that were um, biospheres, I guess. And I, I enjoyed watching it, but the music was almost unbearable, actually. I, every time, I, I don't know, I, I have seen Nature Conservancy things before, and it seems to be a common kind of problem with their videos. Um, anyway. Um, now, I, I don't know. Sometimes I, I might seem a little harsher to her. I, I appreciate anybody who's trying to conserve any amount of nature these days, honestly. The biospheres are not parks and have no legal authority. Um, I returned this a while ago. This I just don't think that I've read my notes about it, and they, it was worth watching. So I think if I read some of this, you might find it interesting. You might borrow this video from your local library. It's two DVDs long, and there are eight episodes. It's really not nice about me. They get this way every time they get it right. Not you though, right, Amfred? You're good. You're my good girl. So, uh, first one that I watched, like you can watch them in whatever order you want, but um, was Long Point. Um, Long Point, largest freshwater sand spit in the world. The wild turkeys were gone and they reintroduced them successfully. Um, Nature Conservancy has protected 5,000 acres there. LIS provides funding for repurposing land owned by farmers to grassland or other healthy ecosystem. The road in Long Point is one of the deadliest in North America for wildlife, especially turtles and amphibians. People were educated and asked to stop and carefully help turtles cross the road. Um, this reduced turtle death by 50%. They put in 10 wildlife culverts. They glue tags on the back of turtle shells. One has an antenna and the researchers download data. Turtles are using, oh, the culvert. Um, they were wary at first and just sat at edge of culvert for a long time watching it and considering it. Once they used it once, they weren't reluctant to use it again. The wildlife fences have been maintained by the group to keep the turtles from crossing the road in other parks. Uh, Frag, Frag mites, first in Nova Scotia in 1910, basically grows one meter in four days and chokes all other life out, including wildlife. They cut it down, but it regrows. Spray, roll, and burn. They use tracks since the frag mites poke right through the tire. Roundup and soybean oils used. Um, hunting org is paying for attempted control of fragments. I don't know. It was a while ago. I've watched this. So uh, Mont Saint Hilaire, 30 kilometers each of, east of Montreal. Um, mountain used for sugar, maple sugar production, climbing, apple picking. There were gatekeepers, guardians paid to keep guard of mountains since fires were forbidden there. Peregrine falcon nesting sites there after DDT nearly killed them all. 
bee diversity makes for bigger, rounder, healthier apples. Bumblebees, wild, visit three times as many apple flowers per minute compared to honeybees. More meadows near orchard makes for a more productive orchard. Nearby subdivisions can serve as meadows. Roads and sidewalks don't, nor do the houses. Um, Clayoquot Sound. Joe makes traditional canoes out of 500-year-old trees. West coast of Vancouver Island, there are over 80 species at risk there. Some communities benefit more than others. The Teoquiat, Ahoset, Hesuit, and Tuquat, Ukluset, are part of the New Chanoth First Nations on west coast of Vancouver Island. There used to be 10,000 people living there, more than now. One head chief was responsible for entire territory, and then forest and stream guardians, hereditary roles passed on. Whale hunting was important and heavily regulated by the First Nations people. They had a quota of 10 whales per year per household, and they weren't allowed to whale hunt again if whale with young was killed. Um, North right whale most endangered on earth, only one sighting in the last 60 years. Brador Lake, Cape Breton, Mi'kmaq oyster farmer, MX, no, MSX, killed oyster there? I don't know what I wrote. He's trying to help restore the oysters there. Oysters put out millions of sperm and eggs while spawning. Fertilize larvae, settle on hard surfaces or other oyster shells, and become baby oysters known as spat. The oldest oysters in the world are located in the Door Lakes, 130 to 140 years old. You can determine oysters' age by looking at shell layers. They are one of the toughest animals on the planet. They're able to live even when frozen solid. If you don't touch them in spring when they're thawing, their heart rate will start pump their heart will start pumping again. They're ecosystem engineers because they benefit the environment that they live in. One oyster filters two gallons of water per hour. Oyster creates habitats for other animals. A couple hundred other animals associated with oyster bed. Askasani, First Nation traditional, a bunch of First Nation would harvest oyster together and determine whether some areas needed to be left or replenish itself for a while. Each family was granted 25 square miles to sustain themselves. They established relationship with the environment. Mi'kmaq families developed responsibility to plant anim animals that they harvested from. Some say not to harvest oysters in months beginning in Jay. Oyster young in June, July. Cape Breton oysters became a major income and food in wartime. Georgian Bay. Rattlesnake threatened. Highway 400 is being expanded through its habitat. First Nation group hired a couple white guys. I noticed the one guy, was he did not look white. He was, I wrote this down and I, I was just, I must have been in a bad mood or whatever, but I didn't correct it. But um, the one guy, he had skin about as dark as my dad's. Um, so, and it shouldn't matter anyway, but I don't know. I was just thinking something. But anyway, to evaluate the rattlesnake situation, Georgian Bay Biosphere Reserve, two kilometers long, Ar archipelago with 10,000 wetlands, 20,000 permanent residents and 4,000 summer cottages also share this environment. There will be a population increase due to retiring baby boomers, 150 years ago overlogged and overfished. Area now relies on tourism for its 30,000 islands. Blue-green algae can be toxic, but that hasn't happened here yet. But the algae can stink if algae gets too I? I don't know what I was writing there. Um, keep water quality high. Program called Life on the Bay. To tell of actions we can take to keep the phosphate level and other things from harming environment. Mussels and invasive species are eating food that native fish and other native species should be eating. See 
lamprey was the first invasive species there. There is now an increase in native lake trout. Impact of aquaculture, aqua cage, is an old fish farm that's been there for a long time. He grows rainbow trout. He moves his operation to two locations per year. There's never been a measurable difference in water quality here. What activities are compatible and what aren't? They collect a lot of dead turtles along the highway. Turtles are considered recyclers. They remove a lot of dead material. Snapping turtle live 100 years. They were feeding bassy worms out of their hands from the... Oh, bassy. That was a pet fit. Well, he wasn't really a pet. He was a fish in the lake, and they they called him bassy. So, um, out of their hands from the dark, dock. Massasauga rattlesnake prevents over-harvesting of plants. Oh, yeah, because people don't want to get bothered by the snake and they're living near the plants so anyway a lot of people don't pick the blueberries since there are so many snakes there i wrote a bunch of stuff on the side here and i don't know what uh highway 69 Perry sound to sudbury there's going to be 103 bridges oh i was noticing the um they had like an official person who was talking about the highway construction that's going to go through anyway okay i'll read this other thing first and then i'll let you know um, in 2008, Ontario passed the Endangered Species Act. The Ministry of Transportation now has to prove endangered species will be better off than before to work, the work began, and they need to do everything they can to avoid killing endangered animals during construction. So, I was when I put that quote, there's going to be 103 bridges. The um, woman, the official that was talking about putting like the new highway construction through from Perry Sound to Sudbury, um, there seemed to be no question in her mind that it was going to go through. And yet, there, this 2008 Ontario passed this Endangered Species Act, but I don't know, it doesn't seem like it's going to prevent anything, because, I mean, this... The woman that was talking about the construction going through, I mean, when they did the research, they were... Uh, anyway, they... So... I'll finish it talking about this. When area was logged, first people let pigs loose in area to eat the snakes. The venom didn't harm the pigs. Early residents killed the snakes. There hasn't been anyone killed by a snake in the last 50 years. Moving snake from their local range kills them. Snake keeps looking for its own hibernation site. And since they can't find it because they've been relocated and so they can't find their hibernation site, um, they die. Rattlesnakes hit on road always die, but sometimes the hit turtles live. The turtles move several kilometers between summer habitat and nesting and hibernation site. Forestry harvests when turtle hibernates in area when turtles are there. Most snakes won't be able to be saved by moving them from their hibernation site that the new highway is going through. Why not make the province pay for care of all the snakes in the area while construction occurs and then plunk them back home once the road is built? It was already known that the snakes die when relocated, so the idea of hiring the ecologist to study this certainly didn't help the snakes out, and it was never intended to. It simply lined the pockets of a handful of ecologists. Like, honestly, um, watch that part. It, even if you don't want to watch any other part, watch the Georgian Bay part, because it's absolutely... It's interesting, right? Uh, I mean, the, the people who are putting the roads through, they're ordered to hire these ecologists to see what can be done to um, make sure that the environment isn't harmed or to see if how it will, whatever, right? But then the road's going to go through anyway, so what was the point, you know? I don't know. It's interesting. So, Fundy, 200 salmon when there used to be 40,000 in the area. These salmon live exclusively in the Bay of Fundy and local rivers. I hadn't even known about this. I didn't know. One of the least disturbed areas of the Atlantic coast. Hopewell rocks are so beautiful. Bats died of white nose syndrome. Lumbering has affected salmon more than anything else. Lumber industry used to dam water, put sawdust in rivers, spruce budworm, aerial spraying, largest program in the world, 85 thousand metric tons of DVD, DDT, 
1953, not one hatched salmon survived a particular spray. Rachel Carson, Carson Silent Spring, Chapter Rivers of Death, DDT, even killed adult fish. Phenetithion was used until banned in 1998. Now very few fish can make it past Petticodiac Causeway. Dams of a few rivers are now being removed for Fundy National Park. Live Gene Bank at Biodiversity Center is a salmon farm set up to put a bunch of fish back into the area, but those fish aren't returning to the rivers to spawn. What's the cause of this marine mor mortality? Fishing? The researchers working with those little birds obviously can't understand the bird's body language. The woman was showing how calm they were, the, the birds were while being handled, and the eyes of the birds were closed. The bird was very stressed. <laughs> but uh, they... I mean, the birds, it looks like they survived the banding process, so. Population should be monitored before they start to decline, even. Poor little bats. Fungus seem to have been introduced from Europe. The bats can groom the fungus off, but it just comes back while they're hibernating, and then the bats die. In a cave where they'd found 6,000 bats, they now found two. Spruce. Bark beetle is a native species, but they've never been such a threat to the spruce until now. They used to only affect spruce that were already under stress. They're now releasing the salmon directly into the river, spawning grounds. One salmon was found returning to the river to spawn, and she was eaten by an eagle. So <laughs> that didn't work out at all. But, I mean, I found it interesting that they said that the spruce um, bark beetle used to only attack affect spruce that were already under stress. So my assumption is the trees are already under stress. They're all already under stress and that's why they're being affected. But who knows, right? <sighs> Redberry Lake, Saskatchewan. Saline Lake, abandoned homesteads in the area, predominantly Ukrainian communities, small farms, 300 acres, 500 acres. Back then, when? Conglomerates are buying up land. Rancher speaks it's not about the money. He's executive director of the Redberry Lake Biosphere Reserve, and at home he's converting his land to native prairie grass and grazing cattle on it to put nutrients back into the soil. Ranchers often advertise themselves as environmental ambassadors. Prairie Cree didn't live in Redberry area year-round, but used the buffalo berry and buffalo. Cree would burn prairie. New growth attracted bison. This gathering made for easy hunting. No fish in Redberry Lake, but water was tested, and they figured they could stock it, so they did. Whitefish fishery wasn't sustainable. Fish never bred there. They'd live if, sto if stocked, but wouldn't reproduce. Then the water level kept dropping. The salinity went up even higher. Resort and trout fishery was going to be located near pelican nesting habitat. It would have been a disaster for the pelicans. Government stopped the development. Zoning bylaw protected that part of the lake from development. Pelican Project put a camera in so people could view the pelicans without disturbing. I really like that idea. Grassland birds are most affected by agriculture. German man from Biosphere Reserve in Germany ended up with daughter employed at a Biosphere Reserve in Canada. They seem nice. The fat canoeer lady died. 1980 to 2015. That weight was not sustainable. Waterton. Ranchers in southwestern Alberta have to stop worrying about bears eating their cattle now. Sheep producers also having issues. They put up electric fencing but are frightened of the grizzly. 700 grizzly in Alberta, 51 in Waterton area. They rub on telephone poles and trees. So, oh, there was a, um, a researcher collecting DNA that way because they, she, she could get it off of the poles. Anyway, um, 900 rub objects identified in Waterton region. They found these trees and other objects are communication centers, which was really interesting. All sorts of animals come to them. Blackfoot people went to Waterton for ceremonial purposes and hunting. Lake... No. Maybe late 1800s. The care of... Pe 
Prairie went to ranchers. 1877 Blackfoot signed a treaty to make way for settlers, and bison was hunted almost to extension, extension by extinction by settlers by then. Waterton Lakes established beside the West Ranch property. Aggressive fish were stocked in the park at one time. I didn't know that. And they're still there. Nature Conservancy bought up ranch lands and then leased it back to ranchers. Can the wildlife move through those fences? Oh boy. Now, I don't know where this all starts. See, I end up doing stuff like this. Um, now genetic database database of 177 grizzlies in the region. Grizzlies historically moved into plains area. Bears also break into grain bins, lift bins off ground. That was interesting. They, oh, that's all they did. They put the bins on stands. No problem all of a sudden. Smart. They have a bin for dead stock now that is emptied for ranchers like a dumpster so bears won't eat the dead because they're in a dumpster. Basically. When grizzly kills livestock, ranchers get paid for it. Palmer Ranch, 4,000 cattle, 46,000 acres, business using holistic management style, one of the ca Canada's largest organic beef producers. Blackfoot want to bring buffalo back. Grizzly to eat buffalo along buffer strip again. Whew. 2016, final results of Morehouse's research. I did. 164 grizzly around Waterton with 68 bears residing there full time. So they had thought that there were 51 bears in the Waterton area, but there's 68 bears residing there full time and quite a few others that hang come you know, come down into the area and hang out probably in the summer. I don't know. When's a nice time for bears to travel? They'd be hibernating in the winter, right? And I honestly I have no idea. It didn't it didn't specify when the when the full time versus part time bear bear migration was. Hon honestly I don't know. I I guess I could look into that if I was interested and I wish that I had talked about this right after I took the notes, right after I watched the video, because then I would have remembered things better. But um what I found interesting was the communication posts. It, um, they had videos set up, cameras set up, right? So they were following, um, they were looking at these posts and, and how the bears were using them, but all sorts of other species of animals were also using them. They'd go to these posts and they'd give them a sniff or do whatever, you know? Um, the wolves seem to like to pee on them. It's a dog thing, right? And so anyway, they'd, uh, it seemed like they were like street signs to them. Like, I don't know, it's interesting. But, um, so anyway, I, I watched that on February 5th, it looks like, and quite a long time ago. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think people would enjoy watching this. So Striking Balance, you can borrow it for free from your local public library.